Here is what you missed this morning on the Catholic Morning Show. Somebody who uh, glorified God in all that he did, Padre Pio. We're going to welcome into the show now author Susan D. Partoli. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. How are you, Deacon? I'm doing excellent. I'm excited to talk about this uh, book because it's the timing is perfect as we head into uh, Pentecost uh, Sunday this weekend. Tell me a little bit first about uh, when you were first drawn to uh, to the life of Padre Pio. I was first, well, being Italian, I always knew about him. But uh, I didn't really get into his life and begin to learn about him until around the time of his beatification. At that time, I'm a pilgrimage tour operator, and I did the beatification and the canonization pilgrimages. But at the beatification, I met a man by the name of Ray Ewan. Ray Ewan was a soldier during World War II who met Padre Pio and uh, served would uh, serve Mass with him seven times. And so through Ray, I began to grow a great love for Padre Pio. All I know about Padre Pio, I know because Ray taught me. And Ray was with me at the beatification and the canonization. And uh, after the canonization, we went to San Giovanni, and Ray knew it would be the last time. He was already in his 90s. Mm. And he was up on the altar praying where he had uh, served Mass with Padre Pio. And he was in the chapel with his two grandsons, me and Julie Fitzgerald, from the Padre Pio Foundation of America. And when he came off the altar, I said, Ray, what are you feeling? And he turned around and pointed toward the altar and toward to heaven. And he said, next time I'll see you in paradise. And three years later, he died. But his great love for Padre Pio... He taught me so much, and it, that's uh, where I, I got, excuse me, I got my devotion. Yeah, and so then, uh, so you've combined, combined that here with uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. Now, is, that, is the Holy Spirit something that you've always had a, uh, a, a strong connection with, or is that something that's yes. also developed uh, o- over time? Well, the Holy Spirit, I have to say, I have a strong feeling to him. I had an experience when I was in, oh, I was about 40 years old, and I had gone to my first healing mass, and I, I knew nothing about it, and at the time, Bishop Garmendia from the Bronx, New York, was uh, celebrating the mass, and after mass, he did a healing. And we had choices who we could go up to. I had never done this before, and I walked up to the bishop, And he placed his hands over my head. He never actually touched me and prayed over me. And as I turned around to walk back, I had this strange sensation in my body. And I sat down. A friend of mine was there. And when I touched her hand, she actually jumped. I said, do you feel that? So after he finished the healing, I went back up to him. And I touched his hand. And I said, can you tell me what that is? And he smiled. And he said, do you have any objections? to the Holy Spirit passing through your body. I said, absolutely not. That's wonderful. He said, well, enjoy. It'll be gone in a few days. And from that day on, I just feel like everything I do in life, the Holy Spirit is leading me, as he should with all of us. Yes, yes. So uh, this book, uh, Welcoming the Holy Spirit with Padre Pio, how uh, how are readers going to... uh, uh, experience or learn what you just sort of described and, and said, that we should all be, uh, be be following the promptings of the Holy Spirit? Well, the theme of the book is how deep is your well? So certainly it's a book about faith. So where does our faith come come from? It comes from the Holy Spirit. In baptism, uh, the Holy Spirit is present in us, becomes present in us. And a confirmation, of course, we become soldiers of Christ through the Holy Spirit. And so what Padre Pio is doing on this journey is he's showing us, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he received, he's showing us how to live our lives. And in each uh, each chapter of this book or each segment of this book, after we read that particular chapter, I ask the question about that chapter. How deep is your well? What have you gotten from this? What has Padre Pio given you? What 
you know, I, I ask you to please reflect on what we've just talked about. And no better person to reflect on than Padre Pio. I mean, he was a kind, humble, very simple man. And he had extraordinary gifts. Of course, the most extraordinary was the stigmata, mm -hmm. you know, which we will never get. But the Lord does expect us to take up our crosses in life. So that's another thing we learn from this book, that uh, we learn not only that we will have crosses we have to carry, but the important thing is we learn that we have to share that cross with the Lord. He's there to help us. And the uh, I, I love this 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 quote that's here that um, you know in, in relation to his spiritual gifts of healing and bilocation, as you mentioned, and uh, prophecy and the stigmata. You know, he uh, they were a mystery to him too, and, and yeah. it wasn't just him being being humble or modest, or you know, it was. But at the same point in time, it was that recognition of how the Holy Spirit yes. works. He could couldn't possibly explain it. He, he, there was no way. Yeah. Yeah. Yet he could explain things that other priests could not explain. So that's amazing, too. And he, and he suffered some ridicule for it, right? And was uh, was ostracized by some of his brother uh, brother monks because of these uh, because of these gifts. Do you touch on yes, that at all many... in, in, in in the book of of you know how how we you know endure uh, some of those challenges that we we meet in relationship with others? I'm sorry. Can you repeat what you? Yeah, I was just wondering if you if you watched. touched upon that uh, that topic at all. You know, the, the some of his sufferings that uh, he experienced and how uh, that that can be a, a channel for the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Yes, and it, what it is is, as I said, we're we're asked to carry crosses, but it's through the faith that comes to us through the Holy Spirit that we know how to do this. We have to be open. We don't talk about the Holy Spirit in the church. We really don't. And we have to realize that all the faith that we have comes through him. So when these moments in our lives, when these challenging moments, like the challenging moments in Padre Pio's life, he turned to the Holy Spirit for guidance. It was the one who helped him through the dark nights. So when we have, well, we, dark nights, of course, means, you know, your loss mm -hmm. of faith, which most of us don't have, thank God. But, it, you know, if it is that, this is the person who's going to help you. The Holy Spirit is instilled in us. He's a very important part of who we are. I mean, we're made in God's image and likeness, yes. But the, the, uh, the feeling, the faith, which leads us along this path, comes from the Holy Spirit. And Padre Pio knew that. And he always, always asked the Holy Spirit to stand beside him and to help him, and he always did. And he always will help us. We're talking with uh, Susan D. Bartoli. She's, uh, she's written two books. Her newest one, uh, Welcoming the Holy Spirit with Padre Pio, uh, in exploring how the uh, the Holy Spirit is, uh, again, something we should all be responding to, but this book helps us reflect uh, on on his life, but then also how we, uh, how, in our own lives, how, how the gifts that, uh, that God has given us have kind of manifest and become more evident. What, uh, you know, what is one of the things, if you had to pick one, uh, that stood out most about the, the life of Padre Pio? Uh, well, you know, I think... And, and I deal with this in the book, in the very last chapter of the book. For all his spiritual gifts, for all the amazing things in his life, there was nothing more amazing than to witness his Mass, which I wish I had witnessed, but I never did. But there is a man, William Carrigan, who I talk about in the book, who witnessed his Mass. And to see Padre Pio say a Mass... It's unlike seeing any other priest in the world say a mass, because he lives the passion in the mass every time. He has the five wounds of Christ. When he's uh, doing the consecration, the devil is pulling the chalice from him while he's pulling the chalice towards himself. The, the uh, devil is beating him. He's abusing him through this whole Mass. And his Masses were very long. They were about three hours. It took very long to get through his Mass. But what he experienced in that Mass 
was the passion of Christ in every single Mass for 50 years. Mm. And we could never experience anything greater than a Mass that Padre Pio has served and celebrated. Welcoming the Holy Spirit with Padre Pio. It is a perfect companion for those who are already drawn to uh, Padre Pio's spirituality or anyone yearning to strengthen their own relationship with the Holy Spirit. And through the example of this extraordinary saint, you can discover how to continually draw from the well of living water and how it can drastically change your everyday walk with Christ. Uh, Susan, how can people get the book? Uh, yes, it's available at Ave Maria Press. Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Padre Pio Foundation of America, National Center for Padre Pio, and many other places. And you were a very active woman. You, uh, you're involved with the, uh, with the board there, as you said, but you also lead pilgrimages. You want to uh, talk about that just a little bit? Yes. Um, every year, in fact, we do a pilgrimage to San Giovanni Rotondo for Padre Pio's feast day. And um, I've been doing these pilgrimages since uh, Padre Pio was beatified every single year for the foundation. I'm on their board of directors, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And um, these, of course, we go other places, too. But when we go to San Giovanni for this feast, it's the most amazing thing to participate. Hundreds of thousands of people come. And it's really, really beautiful. But we do. We travel. We go to Rome. This year we're going to Sicily before we go to the feast day. And, you know, and then on to Rome and so on. Some years we go north. Some years we go south. But we do it every September for Padre Pio. And that's uh, Little Flower Pilgrimages, right? That's correct. Yeah, you can uh, you can learn more. She's the owner of uh, Little Flower Pilgrimages, littleflowerpilgrimages.com. She also is assisting with the uh, cause for canonization of Mary Pyle, one of uh, Padre Pio's assistants. Uh, she is a lady commander of the Equestrian Order of the uh, Holy Sepulchre of Jerusalem. Susan DiPartoli, thank you so much for sharing your insight, your wisdom, and the life of Padre Pio through, uh, through this book, Welcoming the Holy Spirit with Padre Pio. Thank you, and thank you for having me today. Oh, it was great to visit with you. Well, I'm sure we'll talk to you again. Listen to the Catholic Morning Show weekday mornings at 7 on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network, iowacatholicradio.com, or the Iowa Catholic Radio app.